What did he say? <whistles> Hello? I said you're a loser! If Family Guy had a central villain, it's certainly Carter Pewter Schmidt. He's ignorant, cruel, and an influential member of Quahog's elite. So whether he's hiding the cure for cancer or pranking poor orphans hoping to get adopted, Carter is the embodiment of evil. Okay, I guess you don't want a new family, toys and a puppy. So in this video, we will cover the life story of Carter, spotlighting his worst acts, as well as unveiling some rare, humane moments. This is the complete timeline of Carter Pewterschmidt. Hey, I got an email from Mr. Pewterschmidt. His early years. Now, there's not a whole lot we know about Carter Pewterschmidt's childhood, but in the season 11 episode, The Old Man and the Big Sea, we do find out that his parents were wealthy, but weren't around too much to raise him. What if the maid who raised you because your parents were too wealthy and busy got cancer? You mean, Mamie? And it's not hard to see that the absence of his parents contributed heavily to his own neglectful parenting. Talking of family, we're also aware of his Aunt Marguerite, who lived the same decadent lifestyle as him. But unfortunately, she soon died after her introduction in the season 2 premiere, which also happens to be the same episode that introduced Carter to the show. We also learn that in season 16, he has a German grandmother hiding out in Brazil. She wishes you a Merry Christmas. That's not what she said. Meeting Babs while Carter seems to be an absolute selfish douchebag, he has somehow managed to maintain somewhat of a stable marriage with his first wife, Barbara Babs Hebrewberg. Even though he's done plenty of things over the years to sully his vows. The two met when they were young at the beach, and while Babs and her friend was playing with a giant beach ball, Carter was having a drink until the ball made him spill it. So he did the only thing he could think of, and knock her out. And this super unpleasant experience sparked a passionate romance between the two of them. Carter was just so impressed how Babs could take a punch. Yikes. From then on, their relationship was destined for matrimony, before the Great War with Alaska broke out. A war Carter fought bravely in and barely survived a battle with the walrus-backed Nanukwafa. But despite this intense combat, Carter always took the time to write to Babs, but one Once the letters stopped coming, Carter was presumed dead, and so Bab started a whole new relationship with a guy called Roginald. And even though she found a new man, Babs was still dearly in love with Carter, and her prayers were finally answered when he returned home from the war. But their marriage started very rocky when Carter made her conceal her Jewish religion, just so he could go to the country clubs. It was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do, dear. Now, Carter is ridiculously cheap and is unwilling to help anyone but himself. So don't be a Carter and let's spread some love by subscribing to this channel. It only takes a second and it makes me incredibly happy. And it allows this community to grow and unite as Family Guy fans everywhere. Thank you so much and let's carry on ripping Carter a new one. Being a terrible, terrible father. Now, the Pewterschmidts had three children, Lois, Carol, and Patrick, the latter of whom Carter locked up in an institution after he stumbled on his mum going down on Jackie Gleason. Carter hid this from his daughters, and Lois only found out about her brother much later on in life, and by then, this instant traumatised Patrick so much, he became the fat guy strangler. Growing up, Carter always put business over his own family, never attending any of Lois's piano recitals. Oh, still better than sitting through that piano thing. His parenting star took an even darker turn in Welcome Back Carter, where we hear him mumble this in his sleep. It's okay, Lois. Daddy's just taking your temperature. Hinting that some abuse occurred in Lois's childhood. Now, I know Family Guy has some dark humour, but this revelation is seriously messed up. Like Carter, Lois was mostly raised by her nanny Meredith, until one day, she abruptly quit. It only came to the surface years later at Meredith's funeral that Carter actually had an affair with Meredith, and when Babs found out, she was fired. Carter, of all people, should have known how special and compensating a relationship between a child and their nanny could be. 
but at least he did try to make up for it by building a pond outside the manor, similar to the one that Lois and Meredith used to visit, and allowing Lois to come and visit it if ever she thought of her. In season 2's Let's Go to the Hop, Lois revealed that on the night of her junior prom, she was kidnapped and held for a ransom. And despite being told that she'll be killed if Carter doesn't follow their instructions, he stands firm on the family policy not to negotiate with kidnappers. He reaffirmed to Babs that she'll be absolutely fine, and I guess he was right in the end. Anyway, Carter's always been a very controlling parent. It was revealed in season 4's model misbehavior that Carter put an end to Lois's aspiring model career, something he tries to repeat later on in life, even though she's now a fully grown adult. This is ridiculous. No daughter of mine is going to be happy. Meeting Peter Griffin. To say that Carter and Peter's relationship started on the wrong foot is a complete understatement. Upon meeting him, Carter immediately resented his daughter's obnoxious oath of a boyfriend. So like anyone that pisses him off, he knocks them out with a bronze statue. Not only that, but he also dumped him naked in the middle of the ocean, and just when Carter thought he'd heard the last from him, he came across Peter in his jacuzzi asking for his daughter's hand in marriage. He even offered Peter a million dollars just to stay away, but Peter refused and luckily Lois heard all this while standing behind the door. While Carter's first attempt to stop them didn't work, Peter and Lois did break up. But they remained friends when moving to New York City, which we learned in season 18's Peter and Lois' wedding. Carter took this as an opportunity to arrange some suitors for Lois, and it worked to some extent, getting her engaged to Tom Tucker, but Peter, he managed to win her back. When Lois broke the news to her father, he was remarkably understanding about it, and even offered to pay for Peter's bachelor party at the MTV Beach House. But of course, Carter was really plotting to destroy their relationship for good, by planting 90s icon Daisy Fuentes into the party and paid her to kiss Peter on national television. Lois saw this and decided to resume her wedding plans with Tom Tucker, but moments before they exchanged vows, Peter interrupted and Daisy Fuentes admitted that she was paid by Carter to kiss Peter. Peter then proceeded to kick the crap out of the entire family before finally getting married to Lois. From then on, Carter almost always despised Peter, but there was a rare time when Carter threw him the odd bone. In season 3's Screw the Pooch, Carter finally changed his mind about Peter after showing him and his friends a fun night out. But despite finally getting Carter's approval, Peter can't obey his wishes to testify against Brian in court. Instead, Peter gives the court a positive assessment on Brian's character, and Carter's disdain for Peter returns to the status quo. His marriage woes. Now, while there was an initial romantic spark between Carter and Babs, it soon fizzled out as their marriage became more and more about money. When Carter loses his fortune in the season 4's Peter Rotica, Babs quickly leaves him and marries Ted Turner, only returning to Carter once his fortune returned. Now, that's not to say that Carter is entirely innocent in their relationship, having committed adultery a fair few times. Peter even catches him in the act in season 9 and tells Babs. And after being kicked out of the house, Carter finally learns genuine remorse from Peter and she decides to take him back into her life. Which goes down as one of the more positive ways that Peter has impacted Carter. This humbling lesson ends abruptly, however, in season 15's Carter and Trisha, where he dumps Babs for the news anchor Trisha. You ever been with a man who's got a prostate the size of a beefsteak tomato? This actually turns out to be a sham relationship, and what's worse is that he sent his wife to a psychiatric institution for freaking out over it. Hey, whatever happened with Grandma? Yeah, that's what everybody was thinking about, Meg. Trust me, she'll come back if we need her. His relationship with Brian. As mentioned earlier, in the episode Screwed the Pooch, Carter was angry with Brian when he gave in to his animal instincts and humped his racing dog. When Seabreeze got pregnant, Carter took Brian to court to assure he won't be allowed to see his puppies. However, it turns out that Brian was not the father of Seabreeze's puppies. They were actually Ted Turner's. So Ted not only screwed Carter's wife, but also his damn dog. 
As well as this, in season 7 to 420, Carter bribed Brian to campaign to illegalize pot, shortly after working very hard to legalize it. Despite its benefits to society, it lost him a whole lot of money from the timber industry. He succeeds in bribing Brian by promising that his book, Faster Than the Speed of Love, will finally be published. And although Brian's book failed to sell a single copy, at least Carter got what he wanted. Now, Carter may be the type of elitist that a liberal minded intellectual like Brian would come to despise, but that all changed in season 15's The Finer Strings. When Brian served as his service dog while recovering from cataract surgery, Brian started to enjoy both the elitist lifestyle and Carter's company, and so he was disappointed when he was no longer needed once Carter's sight came back. What are you saying? I'm saying I'm done with you. So, desperate to get another sip of the rich life, Brian and Stewie blinded Carter again by spraying toxic water from Lake Michigan into his face. But thankfully, this was all quickly wrapped up using the hasty plot resolver lever, and everything returned to normal once again. Looks like we've learned a lot, and my face is better. Carter's relationship with his grandkids. Carter may have dysfunctional relationships with his wife and kids, but he does show a softer side with his grandkids. Out of the three, Carter spends the most time with Chris. In season 5's No Chris Left Behind, Carter uses his influence to get the recently expelled Chris into his alma mater Morningwood Academy. He also invites Chris to become a member of the school's secret society, the Skull of Bones, but Chris decides he wants to go back to his old school. Which I think was a very good thing, seeing as the initiation involved spending the night with Herbert the Pervert. However, the two really bonded in season 12's Fresh Air. In it, Chris looks after his granddad while recovering from a broken leg, and despite his initial grumpiness, Carter does learn how to have fun by himself with, um, some weird assist from Chris. Hey, next time I want to try it with my hand. This leads on to Carter and Chris having some more appropriate fun together, like starting a rock band. Later on, when Chris refuses his money, Carter names him as the sole heir of his fortune. This kind gesture backfired, however, because it gave Peter the idea to marry Chris. Yeah, it's a super strange episode. And just so you know, mercifully, Peter and Chris don't actually get married by the end of the episode. Thank God. As for his other two grandkids, Carter doesn't have a whole lot of memorable moments with them, well, except for playing Russian roulette with Meg while driving. His business ventures. Now, Carter, he's a workaholic. Not only does he run some huge companies, but he also wields plenty of power and influence from behind the scenes. He will say and do anything just to line his pockets, no matter how devastating the impact will be. In season 10's Tea Peter, Carter disguises himself as a blue collar worker to exploit the newly formed Tea Party with the intention of getting rid of the government. And once the Kohol government ceases to exist, Carter dumps all of his toxic waste without a care for the environment. But the holy grail of Carter's dark secrets is revealed in season 11's The Old Man and the Big C. In the episode, Brian catches Carter in the hospital looking frail and sick, being told by a doctor he is just two weeks to live. But when they see him again hours later, he's surprisingly fit and in very good health. So, driven by suspicion, Brian and Stewie discover that Carter hired scientists to discover the cure for cancer in 1999 and kept it a secret. Well, he knew that there was a whole lot more money in treating a disease rather than curing it. So Brian tells Lois, who then tries to convince her father to do the right thing and announce to the world that there is a cure. After a heartfelt speech, Carter promises to do just that, until he says, I lied. Good Lord, Carter, just when you're about to fully redeem yourself. It goes to show that even when it seems that Carter's heart has finally been opened, it's still a deception and he will always revert back. While in spite of everything, Carter briefly feels regretful of his past actions in season 17's regarding Carter. Following a near-fatal gunshot wound to the head by Lois, Carter loses some of his memory, and while recovering with amnesia, he's horrified to realize the many horrible things he's done, both in business and his family life. But from now on, I'm going to be a better father and grandfather. 
So he decided to retire and give all of his money to charity. But once again, this kind-hearted Carter didn't last too long. Because when Babs found out he was giving away all of their wealth, she shot him in the head. Fortunately, he recovers again and goes back to the Carter we all know and loathe. I can't waste time with you. I'm a cutthroat businessman. Ah, the gunshot changed him back. And so that is the life of the irredeemable Carter Pugishmit. Do let me know which character you'd like to see in a video next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.